Good damn morning, Americans. Jericho Green here with you once again. Make sure you give me a follow on the Parlor app at Jericho Green and get all green gear 25% off. I just ordered another hoodie this morning for myself. Promo code bye bye 2020, all caps until the end of the year. So much bullshit. Um, so first, if you live in the Pacific Northwest, where they call it the Emerald City, Seattle, and if you have some mental issues and or you are poor and homeless, get ready. You're about to get that bulletproof status because they want to introduce what is called the poverty defense. (laughs) And it's exactly what you think it is. So this will basically erase all misdemeanors except for domestic violence and DUIs. You can still get the business for that, but everything else, trespassing, theft, assault, no problem. As long as you can prove that you have mental illness issues, you have mental issues and or poverty, you're poor, you're homeless. So, If you can prove that the reason you stole that that sandwich is because you're poor. I'm just, what do they say? Some of the city council members are saying they just want to satisfy their basic human need of hunger. Because it's gotten to the point that I am so hungry. There are no other ways to get food. I begged for it. I've tried getting a job to buy it. I've dug in the trash. Nothing works. Nobody's giving money. Nobody's giving jobs. There is no trash to dig through. So I must go into this store and steal a piece of bread, a piece of fruit, a sandwich, just some sustenance for my body so I do not perish. Man, get the fuck out of here with that shit. You know damn good and well there's too much abundance in this country for it to get to the point where you have to steal food. I'm talking about adults. I'm not talking about these poor kids who got fucked up shitty parents who don't feed them. If you're a child, that's totally different. I'm talking about adults. Now, if you have some mental issues... Your ass shouldn't be out on the street. We need to build new or reopen mental institutions. Mentally unstable people should not be out on the streets. I'm talking homeless. I'm talking to the point where you got to steal food or you're assaulting people. Because these will be forgiven under the poverty defense. So if your mental issues are that bad, you need to be somewhere. You don't need to be out here living on the streets where the rest of society got to bump into your ass and have weird and dangerous interactions with you. Everybody who's homeless did not just hop off of a train car with a stick and a bundle on the back of it. These aren't winos we're talking about here. These aren't bums. We're talking about homeless people. Who make their life on the streets. That's a dangerous world. Now if you choose to be homeless. I mean I don't know. Should we make homelessness illegal? I mean can you. This is America. You should be free to live wherever you want. Well we're not talking about out in the forest living on the land. We're talking about in town. Putting shit on the streets. We got to step into the street to get around you. Because you've taken over that section of the sidewalk. Business owners have to step over, step around, argue with homeless people to get into their business every morning. People being accosted and approached, trying to go down the street. Your ass has been here for two years. You haven't gotten enough money yet to get off the street. Something has to give. Because this is what's going to happen to Seattle if they go along with this shit. Remember, what was that? Capitol Hill during the summer? Remember they took that over? The the sister 
compound to, uh, what was that shit in Portland? The autonomous zones and shit. So they've done that. So now if you decriminalize a lot of the things that homeless people do, trespass, theft, assault, what's going to happen? Seattle's going to become a magnet for those kind of people. And when it gets too bad, the businesses are going to say, peace out. The residents are going to say, peace out. And then Seattle's going to turn into fucking barter town. It's going to turn into some post-apocalyptic landscape, just like these autonomous zones that they had this summer. What about the people of Seattle? What about the law-abiding residents? You know, those pesky taxpayers. What do they think? What do they want? They're the ones making all this possible, but you want to decrypt an assault? So it's going to be legal for you to assault somebody as long as you can prove I'm poor or I'm crazy? You can steal food from people and trespass as long as you can prove there's something wrong upstairs or I'm poor? That's no excuse for crime. And I hate when people say, well, people commit crime in the hoods and poor neighborhoods because there's no work. They got to make money. Well, there are places around the world that are poor as fuck and they don't have crime through the roof. So what does that tell you? This crime because of poverty is bullshit. There's no excuse for you to sell dope and destroy people's lives in your communities because you can't find work. Because you don't want to put on a paper hat and say, do you want fries with that? You better tuck that pride and get a regular job and stop fucking up your neighborhoods. Poverty is no excuse for crime. That's a cop out. That's bullshit. So what if you're poor? That doesn't mean you can go break the law. You can't break into someone's building or empty house and stay there. You can't steal shit out of stores. I work in a store. I've worked in one for more than 12 years. It's rare that you find somebody who's homeless stealing a sandwich. You know what they're usually stealing? Steaks. Alcohol. So, wait a minute. You're so poor that you can't eat, but you're still in a bottle of fucking Jameson? Huh? Man, please. And I think most people have a soft spot in their heart for those who are living on the street. But my question is, why? If you're mentally unstable, you get somewhat of a pass because things aren't right upstairs. That's why you need to be taken care of and medicated. But if you're out there because you choose to, like these, you see a lot of young people, their families probably got money or whatever, not all of them. But you're young. You're at the perfect working age. If you choose to be out on the street and live that life, you're a fucking idiot. But I shouldn't have to bump into your violent ass on the street because you choose to be there. People think, I think people who don't live around homeless it's like people who don't live around deer. Oh, man, they're so beautiful. Look at them eat the leaves off of that tree. That's Bambi. That's what you think because you don't live around them. Talk to somebody who lives around them. Talk to my mom who had these bird of paradise flowers in the front yard. They wouldn't touch them when they were little buds. But once they opened and they were beautiful with the blue and the purple and the orange, they'd come down and eat that shit. How do you think my mom feels about deer? You ever been going to work and it's dark in the morning and you know that fucking deer heard you start your car from 10 miles away. What's the saying? If a tree falls in the forest, an eagle saw it, a bear smelled it, and the deer heard it. Well, deer must be blind because they wait until you get five feet from them. Then they want to rush their whole family across the street. Fuck your headlight up. I used to work at a paint store back in the day. Some lady came in and the rearview mirror is hanging off her car. What happened? A deer. People hit deer and got them coming up on top of the car in their damn windshield. How do you think they feel about deer? I think it's the same thing about homeless people. If you don't live around them, oh, they're just 
poor guys down on their luck. I've heard people say, we're all just a paycheck away from that. Shut your stupid ass up. That is the dumbest shit ever. We are all one paycheck away. I don't think so. But if you don't live around it, you might have a different view of what they are. If you have very, or if you have very limited contact with them. But if you spent time in a downtown area dealing with them for a prolonged period of time, it's a little bit different. But don't worry. Head up north to Seattle and it's all good. As long as you don't beat up your domestic partner or get behind the wheel drunk. <laughs> the misdemeanors, what is it, the world is your oyster? No, the misdemeanors are your oyster. Pick whichever one you want. Do you know if you throw a rock at somebody and you miss them, you don't even have to hit them, that can be considered assault? So imagine you're walking down the street, you get into it with some homeless dude, and they throw a rock at you and miss you. Oh, and imagine what happened if they did hit you in the head. Could kill you? Could fuck you up mentally? Maim you? But if the cops show up, that dude gets the walk. Why? Because he's poor. We can prove that he's mentally unstable. I know somebody. I actually know both of them. And the girl, their couple, she was telling me that they were at a farmer's market. Some crazy ass homeless dude. Like, you know, some people, if you're around a drunk person or something, sometimes they'll they'll zero in on a particular person for no particular reason, and they'll just fuck with them. So this homeless dude goes up to him, gets in his face, ends up putting a screwdriver to his neck. <laughs> Hello. Dude didn't get arrested. And if that was a misdemeanor, I don't know all the law, but if that's a misdemeanor, that dude would get to walk. Or out here with the no bail bullshit, bring them in, photograph them, fingerprint them, have a good night. That's some bullshit. We should not have to deal with that in this society. Will there be homeless people all the time? Probably. But this kind of shit can't happen. San Francisco shithole can't happen. You got all these big tech companies getting up out of there. Hewlett Packard, some members of PayPal have left. Tesla's out of here. Oracle's out of here. Going to Texas. Will they still have that thing we used to have here? What's it called? Damn, man, people fought and died for it. It used to be the, the thing, the, like, the main thing that made us stand out from the rest of the world. You know, uh, Mel Gibson at the end of uh, Braveheart, when they're pulling his guts out with that hook, what did he yell? Freedom! That's right, freedom. There must still be some of that shit in Texas because that's where these big-ass tech, co tech companies keep going with their thousands and tens of thousands of jobs because these cities are allowing themselves to be turned into homeless receptacles. But hey, West Coast, what do you expect? Now, don't you guys worry all right? Don't worry. Everything's going to be fine. You know why? Because the first person in America got the COVID-19 vaccine. But you know what? It just wasn't any American person. Oh, no. Immigrant. Woman. Colored. Nailed it. So some black woman was the first person in America to get the COVID-19 vaccine. And she was on some TV show talking about, and they've been talking about this, you've been hearing more and more about the uh, Tuskegee experiment, how black people are so untrusting of the medical system because of this experiment. I mentioned it in a video the other day. It was a horrible, disgusting thing that happened, a stain on the fabric of America. And everybody involved was a rotten, disgusting piece of shit. We can all agree on that. But to say that that is the reason that black folks don't trust the government or the medical system, shut the fuck up. Check out that video that I did about it. I explained all that shit and how I feel about it. But why the big push to get black folks to take the vaccine? 
You got her on there talking about, you can trust it. Look at me. I took it. I hope that I inspire you to take this vaccine. Now, like I mentioned in that video, when I talked in, in more detail about the Tuskegee experiment, I mentioned, that, mentioned how the Tuskegee experiment is called that because it took place at the Tuskegee University in Alabama. What sets this apart from most universities in America? It's an HBCU, a historically black college university. Why they had to put the college university, university on there, a little redundant, whatever. So it was, it took place there against black people, by black people, historically black university. So who do you think populated this university in 1932? Black people. So to say that it was all the evil white man is a fucking lie and it's taking away our responsibility. Remember, it's damaging when you take away someone's personal responsibility, whether the situ situation is good or bad. So you're blaming it all on the evil white man. But in order to get the black folks to take it, they needed black folks on their side to do exactly what this woman is doing. Look at me. I took it. You'll be OK. We look the same. You can trust me. Remember what my dad said? They may be my color, but they ain't my kind, son. So I'm thinking about it. And I'm thinking to myself, slavery. Well, the black, the white people, the well, Arabs too, that went over there and got the Africans. They don't know shit about Africa. They're not from there. Invite somebody over to the first, for, to your house for the first time and turn the lights off and tell them to get to the other side of the house. You're going to hear a bunch of, ooh, ow, oh shit, boom, shit falling, breaking. Why? Because they've never been there before and they don't know their way around. You in the dark in your own house, you're like a fucking ninja. So black people, Africans, had to help them catch the Africans. So then you have the Tuskegee experiment where they're saying, hey, black people, come to this black university. You'll be fine. We're going to help you. Then you got the COVID-19. Black lady gets it first. Black people, I hope you're inspired by me. Come and take it. Pattern? Coincidence? Because what I figured out is behind every great colonizer is the colonized. Because you need some of the people you're colonizing to help you to get them to be colonized. The Africans helped them catch the slaves. The, the black folks at the university helped carry out the Tuskegee experiment. Now you got this woman up here saying, black folks, it's okay. Get it in your arm. I don't know. Tinfoil hat? I don't think so. I mean, shit. When does it cross from conspiracy to we might have something here? And I get it. They checked all the boxes. Front line. She's a nurse. She's colored. She's a woman. They had a black woman giving it to her. They had Cuomo sitting there on a little, uh, little tiny screen in the corner because it took place in New York. He's the illustrious governor of New York. So he's overlooking it. <laughs> Inject the Negro. I mean, that's probably what he was thinking. He didn't say it, but I'm I'm just imagining that's what's in his mind. But I don't know. You you tell me. Am I reaching for straws here? Or could there be something? Because this woman is on it, and the show she was on was hosted by a black woman. My goodness. You ever, you ever seen somebody wearing an outfit and they match too much? If that's possible. Like, you know, I, if I dress, I'll go like shirt, one color, pants, whatever. And then the shoes, we usually coordinate with the shirt. But you ever see somebody match too much? Like the shirt, the hat, the pants, the watch, the shoes, the socks. Like, damn, man, that's too much matching. That's what this shit is. Color, woman, immigrant, frontline. Okay, shit, I get it. I know you guys got to do the political song and dance for the cameras. I get that shit. But come on, man. <laughs> Am I tripping? 
This, this seems like the new thing that they need somebody that looks like you to make you think, oh, okay, well, if they took it, I'll take it, man. Hell no. And really, not everybody needs the vaccine for it to be effective. If enough of the population takes it, it's pretty much, it's a done deal. It's gone. Because everybody doesn't get every vaccine. There's too many damn people. But if enough people get it, it's good. We're good. It'll go away. I don't know. I'm just wondering why this push to get people, you know, communities of color, people of color. The language, got to watch the language. And what I got to do is get into the rest of my damn weekend. But you know how it goes. I try to be done with the left, but they just won't let me. Please subscribe. Hit that notification bell because every time it rings, a piece of shit lefty cries. Get your Jericho Green notification tone. Link in the description box. Utilize the PayPal link and the Teespring link to get your green gear. I am Jericho Green. Man, I'm out.